So we're talking about ethics and scientific research, and one of the big questions seems to be, who's to say that these corporations aren't simply bribing the people on these ethics review boards, like how food agencies and climate agencies promote sugar and big oil? So when you say promoting sugar, you're probably referencing the 1960s when sugar lobbyists funded Harvard scientists' research to basically say that fat was bad for you, which pushed people to eat more food that was low-fat, high-sugar. The research was suspect because they did not disclose that they were being funded by a sugar company and their methodology were a little fishy. So that happened in the 60s, and since then we've established IRB requirements to oversee the ethical guidelines of all research thanks to Federal Regulation 45 CFR 46 in 1974. And as of 1995, we have more federal regulations to specifically prevent bias due to financial conflicts of interest thanks to these. And if you're really doubtful about the quality of the study, you can just read the paper, check their methodology, and anyone who's ever published or even submitted a paper to a scientific journal knows that you have to report your conflicts of interest every single time. You have to say which companies are funding you and your research, even if they have nothing to do with the study, they did not interfere at all, and even if they didn't really have anything to do with it. So what about the answer to the real question? Why don't I think that IRBs are getting bribed out? My answer is that I don't see any evidence that that's the case, and I do have evidence to the contrary. So the difference between healthy skepticism, which is fundamental to good science, and conspiracy theories, which is not, is that healthy skepticism can respond to evidence. You can change your mind, you can overcome the skepticism. And by the way, when we're talking about evidence, we're not talking about looking for evidence to prove your point. We're talking about starting from evidence and then building your conclusion from there, not retroactively trying to prove your point. So the evidence that I see that builds my worldview that scientific research ethics are not in danger is one, we have people who are getting consequences or fired for fudging data. Two, anyone who has done research that requires IRB approval knows how long and thorough and arduous that process still is. If anything, it's only getting more complicated as they keep adding more rules. Three, besides the federal regulations I already mentioned, we have the Nuremberg Code, the Belmont Report, the Declaration of Helsinki. Look them up, they all protect human rights in research nationally and internationally out of the scientific community's horror over the abuses that people have suffered by the scientific community, and also just out of a desire that we want an ethical code to run our work by. And lastly, we have a lot of Twitter beef of scientists fighting each other and the media over whether or not science was reported ethically, so we're keeping each other in check, but that's kind of anecdotal. So you can't just say IRBs are getting bribed out. That's a big claim, and as scientists, big claims require big evidence. And I just don't see that evidence that IRBs or scientific research in general is corrupt or failing. Because if that is the case, I would worry. But as it stands, I have a lot of faith in the scientific community's overall rigor in maintaining a scientific integrity. Don't let your wavering faith in the overall morals of society color your opinion on scientific institutions without evidence. Because that's how we go down extremist pipelines. But I digress.